And um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ilo, and it's my pleasure to start our presentation on this minimized space operation with models and mass allergies. And here we have five presenters, but we'd also like to appreciate all the other members, um, like Keski, Mark, Shinji, Zhang, Tianyan, Jingyu, and all who provided valuable discussions and suggestions in our weekly meetings. Our presentation contains mainly three parts. Um, first, I'll briefly go over the problem definition and introduce the tasks that we are trying to solve in this workshop. And then the second part is about the model design for meaning-wise separation, which includes two aspects. Uh, the one is the speaker inventory separation, and the other one is the model design for long sequence data. And the third part is about a um, supervised separation method and how it can be applied to the current systems. So um, let's start with the problem definition. So the target for space separation is pretty simple. It's just about to separate all the active sources in a mixture. And in this workshop, we mainly focus on continuous or say meaning-wise separation, where the separation needs to be applied on a long span audio instead of a single utterance. And here, the number of active speakers in different regions in the meeting can also vary a lot, as in some cases, there could be just one leading speaker uh, speaking for a long time, but in some other cases like brainstorming, then there could be a rapid changes to the active number of speakers. So this introduces many new challenges and difficulties to the standard um, pipelines. Next slide. So the most simple way to extend the current utterance level separation systems to meeting level separation is uh, pretty straightforward. We can first split the meeting into um, shorter blocks and then perform the separation on each of them independently. The separate outputs can then be stitched or connected into meeting long utterances for each of the target speakers. And in this workshop, we, we are trying to investigate several possible directions to improve upon this simple extension. So the first one is that the speaker information can actually be robustly extracted from the single speaker, or to say the non-overlap regions uh, in a minute. So we call this the self-informed speaker inventory method. The second one is that the separation results from previous blocks in the meeting can serve as an external information for later blocks. And we're calling this the local global modeling part. And the third one is that by randomly mixing the mixture blocks of different numbers of active speakers, we can actually use the state-of-the-art unsupervised separation methods to improve the separation performance. And this is the unsupervised separation part. Um, to be more specific on the efforts we made during the workshop, we are trying to extend the local level separation models to the local and global level separation models. And for all of our experiments, we are sharing a few common configurations. The first is that we are assuming that the maximum number of overlap speakers is fixed. And here we are just assuming that the maximum number of overlap speakers is two. And based on this, we always perform a block level separation instead of a meeting level separation. Um, this is mainly because that in general, each block will just contain at most two outputs. But if you're doing this kind of meeting level separation, then the model has to generate as many outputs as the total number of active speakers in a speaking. And this can somehow cause troubles for, for example, opt optimization or computation. And also we are not caring about the station or the separation outputs from adjacent blocks. And we just focus on improving the local separation performance. But here we, we still want to mention that our ultimate goal is still to perform a completely meeting level separation where each of the output tracks corresponds to just one active speaker. So um, this is a brief introduction to the problems and our efforts. And now let's move on to the models and methodologies. Here we will first have Tom to um, introduce the speaker inventory methods. Hi everyone, my name is Tsong Han and I will introduce our speech separation using speaker inventory project. Um, in uh, inventory speech separation, we assume we have a pool of speaker enrollment as additional information. The system dynamically selects the relevant speaker profiles from the inventory during the separation and adapt them into the uh, separation module to improve separation. The main difference with speaker beam network or other speaker extraction networks is that inventory separation use both speaker information uh, and adapt them into the separation module. 
uh, because these two uh, speaker profiles explicit, uh, explicitly provide the bias information against each other. Thus, the target speaker is not predetermined. Also, we separate uh, two sources together, so it's more computationally efficient and the complexity is fixed. And, it can, yeah. and there are two steps in inventory speech separation. The first one is to pick relevant speaker profiles from the inventory. In this stage, we use a pre-trained speaker ID network to map the input mixture and all speech in the inventory into embeddings. Then we calculate the correlation between mixture embeddings and each speaker embeddings. And finally, we choose two speaker embeddings that have the highest score. The second st step is to adapt the selected speaker, profile, uh, speaker embeddings into the separation modules. Previous research has shown that uh, multiplicative adaptation is a successful way to do this. So we use the same strategy here, but we concatenate two adaptation results together and for source separation. Uh, can, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. So we measure the SNR uh, for different overlap ratios. As we can see in the table, when we use Oracle speaker profiles, there's a significant uh, SNR improvement in all conditions. Uh, when we use profile selection modules, the SNR decreases, but still has better performance than the baseline without uh, speaker information. In this task, we show a speaker information is useful for local speech separation. And even without knowing the relevant speaker profiles in advance, we can use some uh, profile selection methods uh, to do this and then improve the separation. Uh, however, in real scenarios, such as a meeting conference, the speaker profiles may be not available in advance. Fortunately, large portions of a meeting contains only the single speaker speech, or we say non-overlap speech. So we can build speaker profiles from the meeting directly. We pass the meeting into a speaker network to obtain a, a embedding sequence. Then we do over clusterings on this sequence, and we use the, the centers of these clusters as speaker profiles. The over, meet, uh, over clusterings ensures that this cluster, uh, this center clusters include accurate speaker profiles. And during local uh, speech separation, the profile selection and adaptation methods are as the same as what I introduced uh, just now. And we, we test the inventory speech separation uh, on meeting audio. We can see in the figures using speaker inventory has a significant performance improvement over the baseline. And we also compare the system with different number of clusters. And we see over clustering provide a slight SNR improvement, especially uh, when the number of speakers is, is small. And we see the performance of the system is not uh, very sensitive to the number of clusters when we do over clustering. So the system is, is kind of stable. The speaker profile, yeah, the speaker profile are built from the, the whole meeting. If we want a causal system, we can build and update speaker profile progressively. But in whatever ways, the speaker uh, profiles uh, are long span information. In this task, we show uh, inventory speed separation is an effective way to derive this long span information and adapt them into local modules can improve uh, the local speech separation. So that's all for this part. Thank you, everyone. Okay, um, thanks, Jung. So next we have the local and global model designs and we have Chen Dali to introduce the, the designs for the long sequence data processing. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Chen Dai and I will introduce the global local model for the continuous speech separation. Uh, in the continuous speech separation task, the speech mixture that we are going to process is usually a meeting audio, which is longer than one minute. Uh, to process, to process uh, this long audio, we use a size fixed window to segment the meeting into uh, several blocks along the time dimension of the STFT spectrum. Uh, the duration of each block is a few seconds and there is an overlap between the adjacent windows. So uh, the input of the network consists of consists of three dimensions, uh, the B dimension for blocks, T dimension for time, and the F 
dimension for frequency. Uh, this is different from the previous utterance level uh, separation models. In utterance level speech separation, the input of the network it usually consists of T and uh, consists only of uh, T and F dimensions. Uh, in our proposal ion network, it contains several global and local blocks. In each block, uh, there is a local ion to perform the separation for each window along the time and the frequency dimension. And then there is a global ion for cross window modeling along the BF dimension. By repeating these GL blocks, uh, the whole network will have the ability to utilize the global information for local separation. Depending on the causal or non-causal implementation of the whole network, the global ion can be uh, uni or bidirectional. We assume that uh, uh, in each window, the maximum number of speaker uh, is true, uh, as E mentioned uh, before. Uh, and we use uh, this object fun function on local separation during the training. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for network training, we simulated uh, uh, 9,000 uh, meeting sessions. Uh, the duration of each session is uh, 90 seconds. In, in each session, the whole overlap ratio of utterance is between 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. Uh, and in one simulated meet session, uh, there are three to five speakers and each speaker has several utterance. Currently, our, uh, our experiments are mainly conducted on the single channel data and the meeting mixture is reverberant and contains noise. Uh, and then the global level permutation environment training is used for each local block. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here are, uh, sorry, there, there may be a, oh, okay. Uh, here, here are the SNR results reported on different on different uh, overlap ratios. The baseline model is a local model and uh, in each local block, block separation, it uh, does not utilize the global information from other blocks. Uh, and I have compared it with uh, two global models, the causal one and the non-causal one. Uh, here we can see that uh, the both global models outperform the local model, model especially uh, in the high overlap uh, partition. Uh, in the, in the global model, the uh, non-causal implementation is slightly better than the causal one. Uh, but on the other hand, the uh, causal one becomes uh, meaningful for real-time se uh, separation. Uh, if we use a smaller window size, uh, like 0 0.8 seconds, the latency of the uh, real-time system will be uh, very much smaller. Uh, uh, this is the current progress of the global and the local separation. Uh, for the following part, E will introduce the uh, first trial that we have made uh, in continuous speech separation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chenda. And here I'm introducing some like um, variants of the model designs. And um, here another pipe, uh, another paradigm for the local and global process, and is a is a we call a three stage design. Here we first have a local separation part and. Then we can have a global modeling part to um, communicate the separation results from different blocks. And then we can have a local refinement part um, on top of them to improve the separation results based on the global information. And this is somehow um, similar to the widely used um, pre-separation and post-enhancement pipeline. And for a local level baseline, um, here we remove the global modeling part and just use the rest of the two parts, like what we're showing in this figure. So here we first have uh, a separation part that generates some intermediate features. And then the shared refinement part takes the features as inputs and then generates the final separation outputs. And here the separation and refinement parts are jointly optimized. So this is the two stage local model baseline. And um, based on this, we can have the design of the three stage local global model. And here we have another embedding extraction module applied on the intermediate features to extract some block level embeddings for every output in every block. And then we can have an RN or self-attention layer or any other like layers to um, own this kind of embeddings from all the outputs and all the blocks to perform the global model. And the processed embeddings are then fed to the refinement module together with the intermediate features to generate the final outputs. Um, intuition for this is that embeddings can extract some target-specific information like um, speaker ID or VAD information 
and the global modeling part can refine the features with the information in all the other blocks. Um, but here actually we'll find that the ways that embeddings are extracted or analyzed is pretty important for good performance. And um, in many of the experiments we, if we've done, uh, we can only get it on par performance um, as a local baseline model. So here we're still investigating multiple alternatives on the embedded extraction part. Um, for the results here, we are comparing the separation only local model, um, the two stage local model and the three stage local global model. Um, here we're just showing one set of the results here. Um, we can see that the two stage local global model can actually significantly improve the performance compared with the separation only model um, with the same model size. Um, but actually adding the embedding extraction part as the global processing part does not further improve the performance. Um, this shows that um, this, the two stage design is actually better than one stage baseline, but the three stage design um, needs more experiments. Um, for the next step, we're, we plan to continue the experiments on the, on the embedding parts and also investigate the possibility of um, like iterative or sequential separation, which is also the form of multi-stage design of the models. Um, actually, that's, that's all for the long sequence modeling part. And next, we will have Hakam to introduce the unsupervised separation part. Hi, uh, I'm Hakan, and I'm going to talk about our efforts towards improving separation models for meetings. Um, so the, the workshop goal is, goal is to improve the meeting uh, speech recognition and diarization performance. Uh, of course, the challenges are that we have long form audio, overlapping speech, far field audio with reverb. Uh, we work with the CSS pipeline, and in the CSS pipeline starts with the separation, uh, and we worked on improving the separation module. Uh, and we had both single microphone and multiple microphone uh, separation models. Um, and separation is really essential because of the capability to handle overlap. Next. So uh, we, for the multi-frame, uh, multi-speaker, sorry, multi-channel separation model, uh, we used our sequential multi-frame neural beamforming model, which is a mass-based beamforming model with multiple is multiple sequence applications of the mass-based beamformer. Uh, the the mass-based beamformer output is fed into the next stage, and you can repeat this procedure. So we repeated this procedure uh, at, with three iterations. Uh, one important aspect of this work is that we use different window sizes for the mask network and also the beamformer. So because the mask network likes to have small window sizes, uh, the beamformer likes to have larger uh, window sizes. So we always go back to the time domain between the mask network and the beamform. Next. Uh, some other aspects or novel aspects of this work is that uh, I talked about the first one, which is different window sizes for the uh, mask network and the beamformer. Uh, we use a novel architecture, which is uh, similar to ComTASNet, we call TDCN++. And we use a soft threshold a negative SNR loss function, which improves the results in terms of stabilizing the loss function. And we use the multi-frame, uh, multi-channel Wiener filter beamformer, which uses frame context uh, around the current frame to extract uh, multi-frame data and then apply beamforming on the multi-frame data. And this is a completely microphone geometry independent model. Next. So, so we wanted to see how this separation model performed in the pipeline. Uh, so we use our pre-trained model uh, for our paper, uh, which is a three speaker, eight microphone separation model. This was pre-trained on library light on the fly mixing with 10 second blocks and with high overlap data and using a TF room, sim a room simulator that we have. And it achieved about 19 dB SISNR improvement on a matching development set. And we got 19.3% were their rate through the pipeline, which is very uh, good result because this is like a mismatched condition because we trained in general this separation model and we never trained on simulated Libre CSS or uh, similar data with Libre CSS and we achieved this number. And we were very excited because we thought that, oh, then we can even improve upon this number by training on the simulated Libre CSS data, which is more meeting like data. Uh, and also for we did uh, run our single microphone separation model, which is similar to our multi microphone separation model, except there is no beamformer. Uh, only the single microphone separation result is fed into the next stage. This one also achieved the respectable 28.8% word error rate in the pipeline and a good uh, SIS and improvement as well. 
Uh, I must say that the no separation baseline is 38% with this pipeline. So uh, we didn't use the best of the best diarizer and recognizer as well. So this is kind of an impressive result. Uh, so from 38%. But then we trained our uh, models on the uh, simulated Libre CSS data with uh, this setup that I show here. So if you look at this four speaker, seven microphone separation model, this is trained on matched data, uh, sort of matched. But uh, we found out that even though our uh, separation performance in terms of SNR is improving, the word error rates got worse. So, and we are now scratching our heads and trying to see what went wrong. Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, reasons uh, for this that we are gonna investigate more. Uh, for, for example, the training data was moderate overlap and it was uh, using six second blocks, uh, unle unlike the other one which used 10 second blocks. And uh, the data was limited. It wasn't on the fly mixing, which, which gave us infinite data. This one wasn't having infinite data. And the room simulator was different. So we are investigating you know, what aspects of this uh, data set, training data is, is causing this problem of the word error rate, uh, word error rate degradation. Um, so this shows, that that shows us that you know, data set preparation is very, very, very important for separation models. So next. Uh, so next I'm gonna introduce our unsupervised speech separation using mixtures of mixtures. Uh, this is a currently only single channel separation. So let's next. So what is the motivation for unsupervised separation model training? Uh, well, you can use real data without reference signals. So typically for separation model training, we need to have reference signals. So we get uh, sources, we get uh, individual clean speech utterances and then mix them ourselves, for example, uh, which is not always, uh, may not always be possible. And the problem with this mixing procedure is even if they are possible, you can get clean speech data, of course, there's plenty of them but you, you need to simulate the acoustic mixing uh, very accurately, using, including the reverb, including the head motion, nonlinear acoustic effects, overlap ratios, SNRs, meeting dynamics, meeting content. This is really hard to simulate realistically. What if we have real, real meeting data, which is already mixed and which has already all these real uh, components in it? So that's the motivation. So we can use real data in real life to train you know, separation models. For example, in this uh, workshop, we have Libre CSS, which is very close to a real meeting data with no signal level references, but it is not fully real because it is a replayed data through speakers, but still the acoustic mixing is real. And we also have simulated Libre CSS, which is the simulated one, which we have signal level references. Next. So how does our uh, unsupervised method work? Uh, what we do is we form mixtures of mixtures. So when we have real data, it's already a mixture, we assume. We don't assume that it contains a single speech, single speaker. So what, what we do is we take a block from our real data and then mix with another block from our real data and then try to separate uh, these into more sources. Uh, let's say if you have two mixtures that are summed up into input, the, we separate into eight sources here in this example, you can see. And then we, we would like to remix these sources with a remixing matrix A uh, that combines the output sources and then tries to achieve the mixture one and mixture two uh, accuracy. Okay, uh, so uh, next. So what are the differences between this model and the regular uh, PIT training method, which uses uh, references? Basically, the difference is that uh, we don't feed uh, mixtures of mixtures in PIT. We just feed a single mixture and then we know the individual sources. And then we perform a permutation matrix uh, at the end, which permutes the estimated sources and tries to match the original references. And then we calculate our loss based on that. But in this work, in the mixtures of mixtures, we use a, uh, what we call it mix it actually. In our mix it method, we use a remixing matrix. Next. So uh, some of the results, we did some domain mismatch experiment, which is basically uh, let's say if you have anechoic mixtures, which means your original sources are in, collected in an anechoic environment, and then we want to have a test set which is reverberant mixtures, uh, there's a mismatch, right? So when we use supervised training, what happens is that uh, we get very bad results when we use mismatch training. With matched supervised training, we get 11 dB. With mismatched supervised training, we get 4.2 dB. But when we use a matched unsupervised training, which is which means we use reverberant mixtures for training, we can get 10.7 dB for, with the unsupervised. 
And uh, even if, uh, uh, so that improves the result from 4.2 dB, right? Matched unsupervised training improves results significantly as compared to mismatched supervised. And even using semi-supervised uh, data, which means only 10% unsupervised data can improve from 4.2 dB to 9.8 dB. Next. Uh, so in the workshop, uh, Jing Shi uh, verified our results uh, used on WSJ0 mix, uh, 8 kilohertz anechoic data uh, using PyTorch in the ESP.NET 2 framework. Uh, so he was able to get improvement uh, from the regular supervised training, which got about 16.2 dB SDR. And with this kind of mixed uh, training, uh, we, we were able to even beat the supervised training, which we also showed in our paper, uh, by achieving 17.4 uh, dB SDR. Uh, and he uh, didn't use any supervised data in this training, just used 50-50 uh, by, by using one source and two source uh, subsets. Next. All right, so uh, how does this uh, unsupervised training work on LibreCSS data? Uh, so what we did is we trained a supervised model with simulated LibreCSS data, which has low overlap, 10 second blocks. And but when we use just uh, single mixtures, we got 21.7 dB. And we trained another supervised mo model, which uses uh, mixtures of mixtures, but now uses a supervision. Supervision. Sorry, I have to log in back. Yeah, uh, which achieved currently 26.2 dB. And this is still training, so it may improve more. In our semi-supervised model, where we mix simulated LibreCSS and the real LibreCSS with mixtures of mixtures, we get uh, 27.2 dB. Uh, this P0 number here is, is the 20% here, 0.2, right? The P0 number means that when we feed in mixtures of mixtures, 20% of the time, we feed a single mixture so that the model sees uh, sometimes a single mixture, okay? Uh, here in, in our trials, the unsupervised model, fully unsupervised model, didn't get very good results uh, in terms of separation performance. So we are uh, working on uh, improving that. But semi-supervised is giving already very good results. So I think this is pretty good. Next. All right. So this is our conclusions. Uh, this is all from us. Thank you. Thank you. So I see there's a, thanks, thanks for the presentation. Yeah. I think there's a, a questions. So from Matthew, uh, Matthew Joski, what is the difference between the global local RN versus uh, global RN versus the dual pass RN? Yeah. Hey, Zhou, I think uh, Yi and Chengda have answered it already in the Q and A. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So actually, given that we have, uh, so just to the audience, we have about another 25 or 30 minutes more to go and we are running a little bit late. So maybe we'll change tax. I'd encourage people to put their questions in the Q&A box so that one of the other panelists can answer it even while the speaker is speaking. It will probably speed up things a little bit. Okay. So That's let's good. do that going forward and uh, let's just move on.